I've been a financial planner now for just on 25 years. So I've seen pretty much everything that has gone on in the industry, starting with my uh, 1987 share market crash, which was the first year I became an advisor, so that toughened you up for the world. <laughs> I've been around for a long time. Uh, I'm very passionate about this industry. I've put a lot of effort into the industry. My attitude is, is to build this industry into a great profession. You need to get in, get your hands dirty and make it work. I went to see a financial advisor myself and I had everything mapped out. You know, this is what my husband and I were going to achieve, this is what we've done. I even done the investment research. And he said to me, you should be doing this. And I thought, oh really? And then I started studying and it just went from there. And the more I got into it and the more that I knew that I could help people and with my knowledge of love for investments, love for doing what we do and making it simple for people to understand, and that's what I do and I love it. I think the most important part of um, improving somebody's life is understanding it. The financial advice, the, the parts that come after that, uh, all link back to that initial understand who I am and understand what it is I want to achieve. Meeting um, the other nominees today has given me a lot of confidence that women in this industry, we make a big difference. And we need to celebrate what we do and we need to have a stronger voice and I've met some incredible voices today and I'd love to see these voices get together and create a bit more of a noise. I love the satisfaction of somebody coming in and just being a blank canvas and seeing the expressions on their face when they're actually learning about things. I'm passionate about helping people whether it be my clients or in the community. It gives me great satisfaction and makes me happy. About 12 years ago um, one of my clients was dying of cancer and I went out to sign some forms with, with them and um, I asked him if there's anything that I can do to help him or to ease the stress, if there's anything that he doesn't feel that he could ask someone to do, that I'd be happy to do it for him. And he asked me to do his eulogy. So that was lovely but difficult. Um, and also before he died, he asked me to take care of his wife. I think it probably gave him some peace at the end, knowing um, that I was there to help her and guide her. I don't think I have to be remembered for anything in life. I think it's what you do with your life that really counts and makes a difference and leaves a footprint in people's hearts and then you're fondly remembered. I had this most amazing lady come to me. She was 70, beautif beautifully groomed, beautifully presented. It looked like she had an enormous amount of wealth. She, in fact, had very little in assets. And by the time she paid for all her expenses, had $11 left a week to live off. She was living on a loaf of bread a day. And then when that got too expensive, she lived on wheat milk biscuits. Through discussions with her, I found out that she'd actually worked in a few places. So we investigated and found some lost money for her. We've now been able to give her an additional income of around $750 a month. She felt that she was one step up from being a homeless person. So we gave her back her self-respect. That was probably the most amazing feeling and one of the standouts, I guess, of my career. When I left school I wanted to be a psychologist and I got a job in a bank 
and I thought, well, if I'm going to run the bank one day, I've got to do some studies, so I did accounting. But I think I'm combining psychology with the job. Sometimes they know what they need to do, but they just need someone else to validate their decisions, and other times they have no idea, and we teach them. And I think through that education, they become confident and empowered, and they can just move on. I'm glass half full, and I want to give that feeling to clients as well. Sometimes they're, they're quite despondent when they come and see us, you know, about financial affairs, and you don't want to paint a rosy picture where there is none, but you want to give them some positivity, and that, that goes through the workplace um, and family. As an office, we often buy a group tax lotto ticket and we often joke that if we won First Division as a group, I'd still be the only person that came into work on Monday. Everyone else would be off. <laughs> so that's what I do. I finished a law degree and realised that being a lawyer wasn't for me and I wanted something that gave me the opportunity to think more creatively and to genuinely help other people. Getting them in touch with what their personal values are. So asking them to really think about what it is that motivates them and then connect that to the way they manage their money. I'm passionate about my kids and I'm passionate about creating a better world. So that's about asking people to stop and think about how amazing the world we live in today, how lucky we are to have been born into a peaceful, beautiful country like Australia that's actually the fifth wealthiest country in the world. And when I look around at the people I share my train journey with to work every day, we don't look like the fifth most happy people in the world. So I'd like to see there being a bridging of that disconnect. I think about this award as a, a, a potential megaphone to amplify some of the issues that I think are really important. And I think part of empowering women financially is building a platform to give them the opportunity to have those leadership positions. And they go and build your technical competency. But share some of yourself along the way. Relax and enjoy and use the natural skills you have to be able to empathise and connect with others. It'll make it more fun for you and you'll be of so much more benefit to your clients.